Hey everyone, it is Daniel Graves. I'm starting to realize that I'm somewhat of an industry veteran. It feels like only yesterday that me and my band were the new guys struggling to figure out just what the hell was going on. More and more though, people are turning to me for guidance and in a desperate attempt to distract myself from feeling old, I attempt to help them. The number one thing that people constantly ask me for is a list of tips or tricks to help them survive the rigors of the road. The truth is, touring is tough. It's both stressful and boring at the same time. Most of your time is spent traveling and you don't get a whole lot of sleep. It's easy to compensate by going overboard with shitty food or drugs or alcohol. At the end of the day, not everyone's cut out for touring. Many people quickly realize that being on the road is just not for them. And that's okay, but if you're serious about being a touring musician, these are the tips and tricks that have helped keep me alive. So far. Rule number one, rehearse. Now, I can't stress this enough. You have to have your show locked into your brain so that you can play it blindfolded. Phrases like, but I had bad monitors, or the sound guy sucked. These are just bad excuses from unrehearsed musicians looking to shift the blame from themselves onto someone else. The fact is, at the end of the day, somebody who bought a ticket to your show doesn't care if the PA sucked. They don't care if the sound guy didn't know what he was doing. If you have a bad show, they are going to blame you. In Martin Atkins' book, Tour Smart, he emphasizes that if piss were to begin raining down on you from above, you should be able to finish your show without batting an eyelash. As someone who didn't heed this advice early enough in his career, I can attest that this is a game changer. Just imagine the confidence boost that comes from knowing that no matter what life throws at you, that you're still going to be fucking awesome. So practice. Rule number two, get to know the local promoters. In fact, get as friendly with as many of the local crew as possible. Chances are you're gonna be seeing a lot of them throughout your career. Be humble, be nice. Get on a first name basis with as many people as you can. You'd be surprised how far a little rapport will go when it comes to negotiating your future guarantees. What happens if Lori Beth in DC, real person by the way, Hi, Lori Beth. Now, what if Lori Beth puts you on and your show flops and you are a total asshole? She's probably not gonna pick up the phone next time you're looking for a gig in her area. Now what? Now you're stuck with a day off instead of having a show to play. You're in a much better position to get another gig, a higher guarantee, or that second bottle of booze if you're approachable and down to earth. So be nice. Rule number three, travel light. This goes for gear as well as personal luggage. Don't bring your entire studio, please. Pare it all down to the essentials. Not only will this cut down on load in, setup, sound check, tear down, and load out times, it will also help prevent technical malfunctions. Now, I know there are exceptions, like if you're Rammstein, but I'm not Rammstein, and I'm pretty sure you aren't either. So until you are, leave your four guitar cabs and 10 synthesizers at home. When it comes to personal items, no matter how long the tour is, you should be able to fit your entire existence into a backpack and personal trolley. My method is to pack 10 of almost everything. That's 10 pairs of socks, 10 pair of underwear, 10 t-shirts, and then in addition, I bring two pairs of pants and two pairs of shoes. Leave the luxury items at home. Chances are you're not gonna need that formal wear because uh, you won't. Space is a resource on tour. Don't waste it. Rule number four, take care of yourself. Junk food and drinking are gonna wear you down fast, especially on longer tours. If you're eating like shit and waking up hungover every day, you will eventually crash and burn. As tough as it is, eat as healthy as possible. Exercise and for God's sake, get some sleep. This is especially true for vocalists. Most people don't appreciate how difficult it is to maintain your voice night after night. If you're a singer, you should be drinking nothing but water. Avoid anything acidic. That means coffee, alcohol, whatever. Now, another unpleasant side effect of poor eating habits and stress is what we call tour guts. Just imagine what it's like when your stomach starts growling and rumbling something fierce when you're a hundred miles away from the nearest toilet. I'll spare you the details, but believe me when I say you don't want to have to hot bag it somewhere in the middle of Ohio.
Rule number five, mingle with the crowd. This is dreadfully overlooked amongst my peers. If at all possible, go out after your show and say hello to people. Not only is it cool to chat with those who dig your art, they're also the ones keeping your career going. These are the people who tell the world about what it is that you do. Maybe they're gonna set their default picture on social media to be their selfie with you. Maybe they're gonna show all their friends and family to make them jealous that they missed your show. Who knows? And possibly best of all, you may be making somebody's day, week, or year. When I was at Warp Tour with my friend Jinx, watching all the Black Veil Brides fans screaming and shaking just because they got an opportunity to meet him, made me realize that this could be a pivotal moment in these people's lives. Just a few seconds of time from you, something that you may not remember in 10 minutes, is something they might not forget for 10 years. Maybe you're inspiring the next generation of artists. That's fucking powerful and awesome. So go say hello. Rule number six, mingle with other bands. Guys, nepotism is a thing. Most of the opportunities that we get in life come through personal relationships. Tours and festivals are a great way to meet your next support band or collaborator. I can't tell you how many bands I've watched crash and burn because they didn't like the idea of kissing ass to get ahead. Well, for one, that's just fucking life. We all have to tolerate people we don't exactly get along with. And for two, nobody said you actually have to kiss ass. In fact, ass kissing will probably hurt you more than it will help you. Ass kissers come off as weird and off-putting. Just be a normal person, be nice and make friends. The opportunities will present themselves organically. The thing is, you're never gonna find out who you do like if you're sitting in the backstage with your arms folded and a scowl on your face. Get out there, say hello, make some friends. Rule number seven, keep busy. Most of your time on the road will be spent on the road or waiting backstage to sound check or waiting backstage for your turn to play. You'll constantly find yourself in a rush to get somewhere to do nothing. In the industry, we call this hurry up and wait. You need to find something productive to do in the interim. While well, my favorite things to do include contemporary art museums, sightseeing, or sampling local craft beer, there's usually not enough time to sneak away. When you're grounded at the venue, you need to find something useful to do with your time. Or else. If I waste my entire day on Facebook or mindlessly surfing the web, I go to bed frustrated and unfulfilled. Put together a mini studio, stock up on books, whatever, just do something that is meaningful to you. Tristan Harris, a former ethicist at Google, now runs an organization known as Time Well Spent. They seek to help people maximize their time and use it in more fulfilling ways. I highly recommend checking them out or at the very least watching Tristan's TED Talks. They'll save your life. Rule number eight, be yourself. A stage persona is a stage persona. We get that. It has to be authentic. If you don't believe in who you are, neither will the audience. Inauthenticity stinks and people can smell it from a mile away. Find something about yourself that is unique and just expand on it. If you're a goth guy who loves My Little Pony, don't hide it, embrace it. Find a way to work that into your stage outfit or your persona. Think about Joe Letts from Combi Christ and his, and his love of unicorns. That is something that is unique to him and it makes him memorable. Your quirks are your strengths and they are what will define you as an artist. You're either gonna be loved, hated, or ignored for who you are. So make sure it's the real you. Number nine, be professional. I know it's easy to feel like this is one big party. For most of the people in the room, it is. For you, this is night 15 of 30. As I mentioned, going hard every night for a month just isn't sustainable. Eventually your show will suffer for it. Beyond that, this is work. This is a job. It's how you pay your bills. Or at least it's the goal, right? Pay attention to your money. Plan your drives. If you're gonna enter Canada with a criminal record, make sure it's expunged before you try to get in because they are strict. Get vehicles that are within your budget. Get hotels that are within your budget. Work hard to support your fellow bandmates because this is fucking hard. If you're the front man, it's your job to set the example. This whole endeavor is a delicate house of cards and it's up to you to keep it from collapsing. And finally, number 10, do it cause you love it. Too many people have expectations of fame or money. Perhaps it's a remnant of a bygone era. 
I wouldn't know. I didn't live through the golden age of music. I never had the luxury of a blank check from a major record label or an entourage following me around, waiting on me hand and foot. This has to be a labor of love. If you're doing this for any other reason, you are gonna be miserable. It took me a long time to come to terms with the fact that I am what's known as an industry lifer. I spent a lot of time believing that I would either blow up and become a mega rock star, or I would leave the music industry entirely and do something else. At some point though, I realized I never would be Marilyn Manson or Freddie Mercury. And with that realization came the understanding that I never could leave music behind. No matter how high or low I go, I am in this for the long haul. I do this because I love it. And you should too. Thanks for watching. If you like what it is that I do, be sure to hit the subscribe button below. And if you'd like to get even more involved, visit my Patreon page. Close to Human Music is a 100% independent operation. And if you'd like to help me keep it that way, consider becoming a supporter. In addition to my eternal gratitude, supporters get cool perks like early access to concert tickets, merchandise discounts, and free music downloads. It's people like you that help keep this whole thing going.